This is a video about Docker Data Center in Azure. If you go to the portal and you provision this, it's also known as Docker EE, Docker Enterprise Edition. My name is Bruno Turkley. I'm an engineer. I'm going to walk you through working with all of the features, well, at least the main features in provisioning this and running a container workload on the Docker Data Center. So this session is basically about Docker Enterprise Edition, and that means that Docker has hardened the orchestrator and the container infrastructure to support enterprise scenarios, initially Linux and later Windows on Azure. So it's really focused on this notion of building trust through certification for not just the infrastructure, the containers, the plugins, and other parts of the ecosystem. In addition, it's focused on enterprise Linux with the flavors you see there, the distros, as well as Windows Server 2016. So let's jump in and provision a cluster, maybe go into the universal control plane, talk a little bit about architecture, and show an example. So over here on the right, you can see some of the architecture come through. Essentially, you have these UCP controllers. Those are the things that are communicating with the cluster administrator to basically perform all the tasks that take place in the UCP nodes you see below. The architecture is designed to be highly fault tolerant and so that's really done by this stateless array of UCP controllers. So Docker will go ahead and replicate both the UCP controllers as well as the swarm manager and the key value store pairs. So any failure that happens will not have an impact on the cluster. And so they're stateless, as I've mentioned. They accept requests, then they forward them to the Swarm Manager, such things as which containers to run, and so on. One of the things you're going to see me work with is the Universal Control Plane Browser, the UCP Browser. And this is another kind of visual interface that you can use to look at your orchestration platform here. So you can see your applications, your containers, the nodes that make up the cluster, any persistent volumes that might be used, networks, and more. Now, one of the things we'll need to keep in mind is as we um, start the provisioning process, we'll ne need to enter in some information. And to get that information, we're going to have to play with some of the containers that come with Docker. It's explained here. So over here at this URL, these are some of the steps I'm following along here. Essentially, we need to go and do a couple things here, like download or pull one of the Docker images down so we can therefore run it and when we run it it's going to generate all the appropriate information you see here that we can paste in. So the whole point of the next step is to get the information that allows us to begin the provisioning process. Okay so let's go ahead now and issue the appropriate pull commands to get this image um, copied to my local VM here so I can execute it more efficiently. So we're just going to download the latest edition, Docker 4x slash create SP Azure. So it's going to be in our local environment. So let's go ahead now and type that in. It's going to be your basic Docker pull command, Docker 4x forward slash create dash SP dash Azure. And we want the latest version. So let's take a few moments to download. Once again, Docker is illustrating how we can take something complex, containerize it, and make it very easy. So I imagine that container, once it's running, will have all the appropriate tooling we need to get the information that's necessary here. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen now, and then now generate the service principle. So it's now time to actually run that container that we downloaded previously, which will run the service principle creation step. So we're going to do a docker run dash ti, and again, that image we pulled down, followed by the service principle name, the resource group, and the location. Now, one of the first things I'll have to do here is enter some more information by going to the device login here and entering in that code. So to simplify matters, I'm going to copy this to the clipboard and then bring up that um, page, the device login page, where I will paste in that code, and it will ask me to continue, confirm my identity, I will confirm my identity, and it's now saying that I'm pretty much done, and you'll see now the code continue to execute. What it will probably do next is look up some subscription information here, and ask me to choose one of them, and notice for number one, I've got my Azure internal subscription here, I'll do just one enter here. 
and off we go um, creating the application and all the various um, pieces of information that I need to make this successful. So it worked. Things are good. Um, one of the things to keep in mind here is that, that if you do make a mistake at any point, you'll need to go in and erase things. For example, the resource group, you'll need to delete that. You'll need to go into Azure Active Directory and delete the um, application name, the AD application name. In this case, mine was um, SP Bruno because it doesn't clean up. If that name exists, there will be a collision and then things will stop working. So wait a couple moments for this to, to wrap up. It's given some um, roles to the uh, role assignments to the identity allowing Docker to provision additional resources if it needs to. In effect, what you are doing is giving Docker the ability to provision infrastructure in your subscription on your behalf. Now, you can imagine scenarios like where you need to scale up or scale down or add a load balancer. These are the type of things that uh, you are now enabling Docker to be able to do. Okay, excellent. Looks like we have all the um, things we need, the secrets, everything that's necessary here to, um, to make Docker work correctly during the provisioning process. So we're going to return back to the portal, copying and pasting some of these last elements here that you see. So let's go ahead now. Finally, uh, we got all that work done to get the app ID, the app secret, the resource group, and the rest of it. Let's go now click on New here and go search for Docker. Go ahead and type in Docker here, and you'll probably notice that the Docker EE, and we'll do kind of the, not the production version, but the basic version. Let's go ahead and click um, for Azure Basic. I'll say Create, and it's now that I need to enter in all that information you saw me copy before. Now let's go ahead and do that. So you saw the service principal ID, pretty straightforward here. I'm going to grab that right here copy the clipboard, paste it in, and then I'm going to go get the app secret on the next screen. Copy that to the clipboard and paste it in. I'm going to grab my SSH key, of course. And here I have the SSH key. I can just go ahead and grab this, copy, return back, paste in the SSH key. And now I need to go grab the um, appropriate resource group as you recall we entered that one it was docker um, ee resource group let's go find that next just pass it up there it is and then of course west us was the location so i can click ok here to continue to the next step so at this stage we're in part two here and this is where you determine where um, you put in the manager nodes and the worker nodes. So the manager nodes are the ones that essentially are the UCP controllers and then the UCP nodes or agents are the ones below. And it's one of each just to keep things simple and inexpensive. We're just going to do a standard V2. We're going to leave the defaults here. We could go for bigger machines for the manager and the workers, but we're just going to keep it nice and simple here today. So at this point, we are ready for the final validation. Um, we're going to actually um, click this off and um, at this point you're going to confirm that you're ready to purchase this particular Docker edition, Docker EE. Go ahead and click purchase. And so a few moments later we're going to have our cluster up and running. Now one of the things we want to do is be able to remote into one of the controller or swarm manager nodes. And the way you do that is you say SSH from the machine that you were doing the provisioning, the machine that had the SSH public key, we're going to SSH Docker at the IP address of that master node and then the port indicated the portal, in this case port 50,000. Now the next kind of goal is how do you get the IP address and how do you get the port? Well let's go find out. So here we are at the portal. Um, let's go inside of the resource group, go find the resource group that we just provisioned which was Docker um, ee.rg and you'll notice it says deployments here. We'll click on deployments once succeeded and you're going to get um, a URL here. Go ahead and click here on the deployment 
And you'll notice that it gives you a couple of things here. It gives you this SSH target. So I'm going to grab this SSH target now and go to a new browser window and paste it in. And it's going to take me to a place where it lists my master nodes. So this is a new way of doing things. I haven't seen other orchestrators do this. Once this comes up, we're going to click on that. In this case, we have just one master node because as you know, we chose one master, one um, control, I'm sorry, one controller node and one agent node. So if we look over here, we'll get that IP address we saw a moment ago and as well as we saw the port number. So this is where you get that information. We can now return back to the command line and issue that command. So here we are at the command line and this is the machine that had the SSH key. And we'll simply um, type that in here. So SSH, Docker at that IP address we got from the portal. And then of course the port number as well that we got from the portal. And that brings us right into the uh, manager node. And so you can do all your f familiar Docker commands here to see what's going on. So let's clear up the screen here and perhaps um, run a little workload test things out. So let's wrap things up by just creating um, a running container and you do that um, in the new world with the docker service create command. So if we say docker service you'll notice there are a bunch of commands here. I can for example look for existing running services with an ls but in this case what I want to do is create one and let's say I want to do a hello world from the docker cloud. It looks something like this. And now when I do a Docker service LS, you see that listed. So that kind of wraps up this session. We can go on, but really I wanted to illustrate how you would create um, a cluster using the latest Docker EE with all the complexities around service principles and the like. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next video.